Welcome. Today, I want to discuss my favorite psychedelic compound, DMT, also known by its full name, dimethyltryptamine. Now, most of you guys probably are already aware of DMT. Perhaps you've seen the fantastic documentary available on Netflix, The Spirit Molecule. Or maybe you've seen literally any episode of the Joe Rogan Experience. I listen to a lot of classic DMT. DMT is DMT and DMT. DMT, DMT, DMT. If you have, then you know that DMT is extremely hallucinogenic, and a large enough dose will blast your consciousness off into a completely different realm. And if you're a fan of this show, you're probably aware of the different clinical trials underway, attempting to treat a variety of mental health care conditions using DMT. You might even know about the many different non-controlled studies looking at both DMT and ayahuasca, which is a brew which contains DMT, that show the many different benefits to mental health that DMT can bring. Though to be clear, because these are non-controlled, we have to take them with a grain of salt. However, if we assume, and by the way, this is a huge assumption, but if we assume that the current clinical trials repeat the findings of the non-controlled studies and also, you know, the thousands of anecdotal stories, then a very important question arises. Are the benefits that people get from DMT due to the experience that they have, the psychedelic experience, or is it due to the pharmacological effects of the drug in the brain? Put another way, Without the hallucination, could there still be positive medical effects of DMT? Enter Celera Biosciences. Now, Celera is a psychedelic medicines company working on next generation psychedelics. Specifically, they want to create non-hallucinogenic versions of classical psychedelics. One such drug is PSIL002, a non-hallucinogenic version of DMT and the topic of this video. Now, Celera just recently finished a preclinical trial in mice using PSIL002, and they found two very important things. First, the drug was well tolerated and safe in the mice. And second, it was in fact non hallucinogenic. Now, using this data, the next steps for Celera are to do more animal trials and eventually human clinical trials to test whether PSIL002 is an effective treatment in treating depression and addictions, starting with alcoholism. But we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves, let's take a step back and zoom in to the current trial. So, like I said, they found two important things. PCL002 was safe, and also, it was non-hallucinogenic. But hold on! How do we know it was non-hallucinogenic if this was done in animals? It's not like we can ask the mice. Yo, mice bro. You tripping balls right now? Yeah, you're tripping balls right now, I see you. That would be silly. Instead, they have to use this creative method called the head twitch response. Now, basically what the head twitch response is, is some clever scientists saw the correlation that when an animal is undergoing a psychedelic experience, they twitch their head and a little bit of their body a lot. I'll put an example on the screen for you guys to see now. But basically what they found in this study was that there was no head twitch response and therefore the mice were not undergoing a psychedelic experience. But despite not undergoing a psychedelic experience, the drug was still attaching to the same receptors in their brains, primarily the 5H2TA receptor. What this means is that Celera, if their data is correct, have effectively created a version of DMT that is non-hallucinogenic. Now this gets us back to our big question of the video. Can this version of DMT still be an effective medicine to treat issues like depression and addiction? Well, unfortunately, it's still too early to tell, seeing as that isn't what we tested, but that will be what they're testing in the near future. And remember, we still haven't even proven whether or not regular DMT is an effective treatment for things like addiction. So we still have a long way to go. Nevertheless, the scientific advancements that Celera have made here are still very exciting. However, even if this does work, it does raise the question, do we even need a non-hallucinogenic version of DMT in the first place? Some might argue, and I'm sure some of you guys are yelling at your screen right now and maybe typing angrily in the comment section. Woo, that was, woo. Some of you are probably arguing that we don't even need a non-hallucinogenic version of DMT. We already have a perfect version that exists right now. 
However, as Solera argues, there are a couple of good reasons why we might want a non-hallucinogenic version. First, this would be a medication that could be taken anywhere, even outside of a clinical setting, even in a place like work. Second, this would be important for scaling up psychedelic treatments. If you don't need to be in the presence of a therapist when you're taking it, this would make it much more affordable and thus accessible. And finally, maybe some people just don't want to have a hallucination with their medication. That is a very reasonable position. And if we do in fact have a medication that is equally as effective but does not cause a hallucination, well then, that might just be the better medication. And I know some purists might not like to hear that, but that is how Solera feels and that is a little bit how I feel. But again, we're at the very beginning here. We're gonna need five years minimum to see whether or not this drug even works. But now it's up to you. Let me know down in the comment section whether or not you think we should be expending time, money, and effort into creating non-psychedelic versions of psychedelic drugs. I want to hear from you. And while you're there, pump up that algorithm with your like, subscribe, and hit that notifications bell. This is James from The Psychedelic Investor, and I will see you next time.